Never farm crops or run out of food again when you build this super easy and efficient villager auto crop farm that produces infinite potatoes, carrots, beetroot, and wheat inside of Minecraft. Now in terms of locations to set up this villager auto crop farm that I've designed myself, I would pick an area that's not at a village but close enough to one that you can easily transport villagers from that village to your farm location. For the actual farm build, you're going to need at least 5 stacks of potatoes or carrots or beetroot seeds or wheat seeds, you'll want 4 minecarts with hopper, 4 water buckets, 5 stacks of dirt, 40 building blocks, and about a stack and 24 of slabs, 4 composters, 4 light blocks, 10 hoppers, 4 rails, 1 lightning rod, as well as 10 chests. This farm is super simple and it does require 5 villagers, and to transport those you'll want some boats, as well as some rails and powered rails, and some redstone torches, some minecarts, and some temporary blocks. Start by getting all of your your dirt as well as chests and hoppers. The center of the farm is going to be where we place this one double chest. Then on top of that double chest we want to place four more double chests, and while we move upwards simply place a hopper into the chest on the side there, so that the items move down and store correctly, and of course you can always make your storage system bigger than this if you want, but it doesn't need to be. Now into this top hopper, place a hopper going downwards, and a hopper in each one of the sides to make a plus shape of hoppers where they all funnel into the main system. Then place a dirt block in each one of the corners, and from this corner we want to go out nine blocks total. So it's 9 blocks this direction, then turn, and go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and do the same thing on every other side to make 4 9x9 nine nine squares. Now that these squares are here, you want to fill them all the way in, except you do want to leave the central block to be empty, as that's where the water source for each one of these farms is going to go. And that should use exactly all of our dirt blocks. Now take your 4 water buckets, or this technically could just be 1 water bucket and an infinite water source. 5 stacks of potatoes, the building blocks, as well as composter and shroom light. And for each water source, place down a mangrove slab, then water, then a composter, and a shroom light on top of the composter. Just be careful to press shift when you're placing that shroom light on the composter, because you can actually compost shroom lights if you're not careful. And of course you don't necessarily have to use shroom lights, just some sort of light block. Technically even a solid block on top of here with torches around it would work, it just wouldn't look very good. Get out a hoe and till every single dirt block in the entire build, as all of this will be farmlands that the villagers will be working on, one piece of farmland per villager. And be sure to till absolutely every single block here, because of course there's no way for the farmer villagers to till the dirt blocks back into the tilled farmland, and so if it is converted you're going to have to manually fix that. Now go throughout the entire farm and plant down a potato on every single piece of cropland. Doesn't have to necessarily be potatoes, definitely carrots and potatoes are the most efficient things to use, but you could also place down wheat seeds or beetroot seeds if you want. If you want to have this farm produce multiple types of crops, you're going to want to have the crops be all the same in each field. So for instance you could have one field be potatoes, one field be beetroot, one be wheat, and one be carrots, but you would not want to have a field be a mix of wheat and carrots, just because then each villager only has one type of crop in their inventory, which makes everything a lot simpler and easier to deal with. And now all the farms are planted, now we need to divide all of these different fields that the villagers do not interact with each other, only with the villager in the center. We're going to place down a slab on each of the corners here like this, and on top of that place two mangrove planks, and from those planks build outwards each direction so that you're one block from the edge just like this. This will stop the villagers from trying to breed with each other, or even just from wasting time doing interactions, as this makes them only be able to either interact with the villager that they're giving the food to, or to do their farming. Once these lines are down here like this, they want to grab these slabs, and starting one block lower, just down here, place them going all the way around the entire farm's edge, on the lower half of this block. The mangrove around the edge of the farm has now been placed down. Of course you can use whatever materials you want, I just used mangrove because it looks cool. Grab all the rest of the materials in the shulker box. But the only things we're going to use for now is simply place down a rail on every single edge here of the centerpiece. Then just with some temporary blocks, bridge out till you're over the center, and go five blocks from the top of the villager's head when it will be there. So that would be right here. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And up there place a lightning rod. This will protect the entire farm from those villagers by accidentally turning into witches. And if you think the chance of that is far too low, recently I actually had an area where I lost three of my best villagers because I did not have lightning rods there to protect them. Now we're going to save 
save these four slabs and minecarts with hoppers for a little bit later, because now it's time to get our materials together to bring the villagers over to this farm. To start, let's quickly build the infrastructure to get the villagers into the farm, start a little bit away from the farm and start placing down blocks in sort of a staircase shape, then make that dirt just go over the edge, looking into one of these sections here. Also with the dirt, you can sort of place down areas where tracks will go that will lead into all the other parts of the farm. And you can even place down rails on all of these if you want to. And then of course on the area here that's the incline, be sure to put down some powered rails and a redstone torch, maybe even two if it needs it, so that the villagers can be directed into each section of the farm. Now for instance, you can see right here that there is a village that is actually decently close to where our farm is. So in a scenario like this, for instance, it shouldn't be too hard to transfer villagers from that village all the way over to our farm. Something also incredibly important is that you are not getting employed villagers. These villagers should be completely unemployed, although not nitwits, and the reason why is that if they are employed as a farmer already, then basically that farmer villager will have crops that are in its inventory that are extremely hard to get out of their inventory, so it's a much better idea to get a villager that's never been a farmer, so that you can start from scratch there and give it the crops that you want it to farm. Oftentimes, if you don't want to spend a lot of rails too, using boats is a really great idea because it can be very easy to move quickly with them if you have any rivers nearby that village. You could also fully transport the villagers with minecarts if you want, if you'd rather not use boats. Maybe even pathways through the nether can be a good idea sometimes. It all depends on where this is being set up. And once you've gotten to the closest place where you can bring the villager, then what you want to do is you want to surround it with some dirt blocks that cannot escape in any direction, and put some rails and a minecart in front of it, and break the boat, and then try and get that villager to be trapped inside of the minecart. And although the villager will not naturally cross the rails, if the minecart is on a corner there, the villager should just hop right in. And then from there, using segments of rails and powered rails, just guide the villager with those rails all the way over to the farm. The good thing too is that once that rail network has been made, then you can just reuse it for all the different villagers to easily transport them from one area to the other. And this villager should be automatically placed full in that minecart into one of the four farming sections. Just be sure that the villagers that you bring in are unemployed, and once one of the villagers has gone into one of the sections, simply break the blocks around there and replace it, so that the next villager is automatically directed to the next section that you want them to go. And now that this villager is here, we'll rearrange the tracks again, getting our other villagers pushed up into the system. You could always bring all of your villagers over first and then load them into here one by one. It's whatever you want. You also want to sort of rearrange the track so that one of them goes straight forward into the center and have your fourth villager end up right there. And we'll just push the final villager on its way into the last section. And now get rid of all the temporary dirt and tracks up here. And now we'll grab the rest of the items from our farm build and start by placing some dirt temporary blocks around here so that the villagers can simply not go into each other's sections, though technically the rails stop them, sometimes they won't always follow that. Then you want to break each of their minecarts with an axe or a sword, it's whatever you want. And you'll notice as soon as you do this, this villager will become a farmer and will start farming those potatoes. And of course, if any blocks were turned into dirt, be sure to till them back into farmland. Now for the central villager here, break the minecart and try and get that villager into the center. You can sort of lead it by placing down these minecarts with hopper. We want to get it till it's fully central there. Villagers will never cross rails, so once there's rails on either side, just slightly push that villager so that it's perfectly centered, and once it is, then replace down all those minecarts with hoppers, being sure that they're aligned correctly, and basically put a dirt block on top of each one of the corners here, so that the villager is fully surrounded like that. Then put a mangrove trapdoor, each facing a different direction on the side, and fold them in just like this, and what this pattern will do once you break these dirt blocks is it'll make it so that the villagers can go up and interact with the central villager. However, they cannot see any other villagers but the central one, so they'll never try breeding with any of the other villagers. And because this villager will never get food, they'll never try breeding with it either. Also, these minecarts on the ground are actually safe from being moved, because villagers will never try walking over rails, so as long as the rails are on top of that there, the system should work perfectly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this villager crop farm that I designed. If you did, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to see more farm tutorials and other Minecraft content. I'll see you in the next one and have a great day. Goodbye.